Hey everyone, Mike Rivera here with FCP Euro. Today we're back in the shop with our project MK6 GTI. We already tackled the front brake, so we're gonna go ahead and work on the rear. Remember, we're gonna be using a set of Zimmerman OEM rotors along with OE Techstar pads. Let's get started. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start with removing the caliper from the caliper bracket. Volkswagen tends to use very shallow 13 millimeter bolts holding the guide pins onto the bracket. You're gonna to wanna to use a 13 millimeter wrench to break those free. Also, you're going to want to hold this locking block at the back of the guide pin so you're not spinning both at the exact same time. Again, be very careful because those bolts are very shallow and sometimes they do tend to make the wrench slip. So I'm going to start with breaking them free. As you can see, I'm starting to spin that block. So I'm going to come in with a needle nose just to grab it in place, hold it while I can get my 13 back on there. see the head of that bolt is very very shallow again you got to do the exact same thing on the bottom bolt break it free hold that square in place with some needle nose then you can remove the shallow bolt from there you should be able to move the caliper out of position You don't have to worry about hanging this in any particular way because the brake, emergency brake cable attaches to the rear using a bracket as does the brake line so you don't have to worry about putting any stress on the brake hose. With the bracket exposed and the caliper out of the way you can go ahead and remove your brake pads and these guide clips as we're going to be replacing them with new units from Techstar. Sometimes they get pretty caked on so you might need some help removing the rear and again same set of clips all right before we can begin removing the brake caliper bracket the disc and start replacing it with new components and while we're still up front i want to take this opportunity to go ahead and retract the piston that's inside this caliper and what you're going to need to do that is a retractor tool i have this option available from cta manufacturing part number 1462 and what it does is that it has a bunch of discs that come along with it that correspond to notches inside the caliper piston so it'll work on various different applications what you do is bring it into position support it with the bracket that comes with it and begin threading it until it makes contact with the corresponding notches on the caliper because you want to do two things one you want to spin the piston to retract it and you also want to push the piston in to help it go home it takes some resetting as you're moving away from the piston face. So sometimes you'll need to tweak it and get it back into position and line up your notches. It brings the piston back to where you need it to be. From there, you can see how it brought or retracted the, cal the caliper piston all the way back in and I was grabbing on those two ears, those two little notches using the tool. Now we can begin to work on removing the caliper bracket and that's done in the back. Okay, at the rear of the spindle, there are two caliper bolts that are very, very long threaded bolts that thread through the spindle and through the caliper bracket. These require a size 14 triple square socket to remove and quite a bit of elbow grease. What I do recommend is that you insert the socket as deep into the stud as can be just to make sure you have good positive engagement and then start working it out. These are super tight typically just because as aforementioned they are threaded through the spindle and through the caliper bracket. You don't have to take them all the way out just so that you can release the caliper bracket is all you need to do. And again it is a very very long bolt. Just take your time. I'm gonna go ahead and work on the bottom one. 
Same thing, making sure that I get very good positive engagement. Make sure my socket is as far in as can be. Looks like I freed the top one. Got a little more work to do on the bottom one. Bottom one's out. With the brake caliper bracket free, the brake caliper out of place, now we can start removing the rotor. You're gonna need a T30 Torx bit to remove the brake rotor set screw. These should not be too tight as they just hold the rotor surface onto the hub. From here, you're gonna wanna free the brake rotor from the hub. As you can see, our brake rotor definitely needed to be replaced. It's in terrible shape. See some rusting along the edges, rust along the hub uh, hat. And typically that rust will build up along the surface of the hub and kind of make it stick. So we're gonna use a hammer and um, persuade it off. You don't wanna go too crazy with how hard you hit it because you do not wanna damage the hub, but this one may need a little bit of some love to get it off, so. You can see all that corrosion coming off. Freeze it off, remove it. Now we can come in with our new replacement rotor from Zimmerman. Lining up the brake rotor set screw location. Bring it home. From here we have to go back and set the brake caliper bracket mounting bolts into position and the brake caliper bracket so that we can catch onto the threads and make sure it's lined up properly. I'm just gonna make sure that my caliper is out of the way. I'm gonna lift the car up and we can get started on that. All right, at the rear of the spindle, I'm gonna go ahead and hold my caliper bracket into position. I'm going to line up the bolts and begin threading. I start with the top because it's the one that's probably the most visible. And I just wanna make sure that as I'm threading into the spindle, I'm also threading into the caliper bracket. All right, looks like I caught the top one. Bottom one is harder to see. All right, looks like I caught the bottom one as well. Now these bolts are very long, so it will take you some time to bring them home. But just be patient, because you do not want to cross thread them. Okay, from here we can now set in our new uh, retaining clips that come in the kit from Techstar. Make sure that we orientate them correctly on the little ears. These should also snap into place. Like so. And what these do is they just help orientate the pad as it goes freely along the bracket. There's two more on the back, same procedure there. Okay, once those are properly seated, you can prepare to insert your pads. The Techstar kit will come with its own lubricant. And as I mentioned while doing the front, I do recommend that you put a good portion on the rear of the pad and work it onto the small ears that slide on those clips that we just previously installed because that's where a lot of the movement in the path is gonna happen and you wanna make sure that you avoid any vibration or any kind of noise. Press it down firmly just to make sure that you have a good contact and it's in the right appropriate spot. Doing the exact same process on the rearest pad. With that installed, you can swing your caliper bracket into position, lining up the notches where it would sit on the guides. The OE pads from Texar will also come with replacement 13 millimeter screws. Each of these screws will have blue Loctite on them, so it's important that that stays on when you go to install, because you definitely want to make sure that those bolts stay fastened. Just starting them by hand, come back with my needle nose vice grips to grab that block. I can begin tightening. Work my way to the bottom one. All we have to do is repeat the process on the opposite side, take the car out and make sure I do a thorough bedding process just to seat the pads onto the OE Zimmerman disc and we should be good to go. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and we'll catch you next time.